Hello, and welcome to day three of the Green Style Sundial Lightning Sew Along. I'm so glad you're back. And today is a quick and easy day. We are sewing our inseam. So the inseam, you just wanna make sure that you use a stretch stitch whenever you're sewing this step, um, as well as after you've sewn it, you might wanna go back and top stitch it. Um, today will be a lot easier if you use clips to line everything up before you get started. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm gonna turn them back right side right side in so that I can sew up my legs. So you're gonna wanna get a lot of clips or you can wing it. Um, I prefer not winging things. I am an over clipper and it saves me a lot of seam ripping. So is what I'm gonna do is just kinda match up to make legs out of these. So essentially, if you're new to sewing leggings, you sewed them like this to start off with and now you are just making legs like this okay so I'm gonna do lots of clipping I'll make this video go fast so that you don't have to be bored with all my clipping and then after I finish clipping it we're gonna start at the bottom of one leg come all the way up to the middle and then go back down and then we'll be done with that seam if you want to top stitch that seam when you're done I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch mine um, but if you don't you can as long as it's a good and secure and stretchy seam you don't have to you if you do want to like sew an extra like um, an extra security stitch you can like just through your crotch area if you think that that's somewhere that you might be prone to busting um, but then after that we'll be ready for the waistband and for hemming Okay. One thing I want to talk about real quick is lining up stripes. And if you put them, and this is just what I've learned with my machine, um, if you put them exactly where they're supposed to go, like if you put this stripe, like you see, like you can look at it and you can see, oh, that's perfect. That's exact. And then I'm going to run it through my machine and it's just, it's not going to match up. It'll, um, the top fabric will slightly go backwards. Like once it goes through the machine, the machine will just slightly push it backwards. Um, as it moves. So I've learned that whatever fabric I am feeding through first, that I just make it slightly ahead of. So when I'm lining it up, I like push it just slightly, slightly ahead of. Not a lot. It's like not even an eighth of an inch. Um, I would say it's like one sixteenth of an inch um, if you're being really technical. And that little amount usually makes it to where it matches up. But if you don't match it up perfectly, don't worry, you can cover it up with your top stitching. Um, okay, so let's get to sewing. I'm gonna sew my entire inseam. Okay, so I have finished my inseam and it looks pretty good. I am, um, now I'm gonna top stitch it. Now this is, um, I say it's optional, but I think it's really useful, especially on fabrics that there might be a little bit of see-through as it stretches across your leg. I think it just helps to make it a little more secure. So you can do a twin needle, you can do any stretch stitch on your sewing machine. I'm gonna use my cover stitch machine. Um, I'll, you'll see a lot of um, active wear sewers. I even do this a lot, is I'll do the reverse cover stitch. On this particular pair, um, I'm going to just be doing the, um, a regular stitch with just two needles um, on top so that it's not as obvious because I'm just doing it for purposes of securing it um, and making it more of a, um, a secure seam. I'm not doing it for decorative purposes. Um, I'll do another pair maybe and I'll show a decorative purpose seam. Um, or if you want to see that, um, click on to the Tempo Tides video. And I do all kinds of reverse cover stitching that's nice and fun. Um, but this pair is more simple. I want to be more quick about it. So I'm just gonna do some basic top stitching. So the whenever you're doing an inseam, the best thing to do is to start on the crotch. Do not start on an ankle to top stitch because it's gonna get really difficult as you go down this leg. It's much easier to start on the crotch and then go down one leg and then stop and then start back again on the same point in the crotch and go down the other leg. Um, that is so much easier, especially um, on the lower end of the size chart where it's getting really small near the ankle. Um, it's going to get difficult as it is. I'm um, doing it once, but if you try and do from one ankle to the next, that is, you're going to be ripping some stitches or you're going to be getting frustrated at your machines. Okay. Now you're seeing the side of my face talk, but anyways, I am at my cover stitch and I am ready to get started. I think the crotch is such a good place to start because nobody's really going to be looking 
up close at your crotch so it's okay to have the overlapping beginning stitches there. So I am doing these where they are inside out and the right side is facing up towards the needle. If you're doing a reverse cover stitch, you'd be doing the opposite. You would have them, um, the reverse side of the pants facing up towards the needle. And on that one, I also, if I'm doing a reverse cover stitch, I would I do all three needles in. Um, if I'm just doing a standard top stitch with the needles on the right side, then I'm only gonna do two needles. I'm trying my best to, um, See, as it starts, if it gets too bunched up under your presser foot, then you'll kind of skip some stitches. So go slow enough that whenever you see it getting bunched up that you're pushing it out of the way. I'm getting closer to the ankle. So you see how small this area is getting. I'm working on a very narrow area. So I'm doing my best to keep it clear to where it, there's nothing bunched under the presser foot. And I'm just taking my time. I'm at the very end. And it's like those last few steps. It's like, oh man, oh, I made it. So exciting. Okay, so now I'm going to lift up my needles, lift up my presser foot, and grab my tool to like pull the threads out. And now that the threads are out, I can kind of shimmy this underneath to get my fabric free. I'll show you the one that I have done. I didn't, I wasn't that even. That's okay. Nobody's going to look. And that's what it looks from the right side. And then my inside, you just see it's kind of double. And then you want to stretch it. It's nice and stretchy. Make sure that you're not going to pop any stitches when you do a squat. And if so, then you are good to go. Let's do the exact same thing on the other side now. And we did one leg and we're going to keep this leg inside out and then do the other. So if you are, um, after you sew your legs together and you want to top stitch and you've done the gusset, you'll want to make sure that you push the seam underneath towards the back of the pants because it's going to be a really bulky area to top stitch if you try and push it towards the gusset. So just make sure that you sew that seam towards away from the gusset. Okay so and that's whether you're reverse top stitching or just regular top stitching or even if you don't want to top stitch all the way down the leg you might just want to top stitch in this area to make that seam right here not um, to make it more secure and to make it not kind of bubble up for all the stuff joining there.